Here's your news for September 7th, 2020. And your headlines for today include AJ Styles' final opponent in WWE revealed. WCW's John Riker, Ralphus, has passed away. Real reasons why Vince McMahon was pushed to ban WWE superstars from third-party business. WWE superstars demand more money for quitting Twitch in Cameo. WWE forcefully shutting down Paige's Twitch channel even after name change. Are AEW stars allowed to work with third-party social media platforms? AEW releases a statement. Critical news about Matt Hardy's MRI and CT scans. What's next for him? John Moxley cuts promo after AEW All Out. Let them hear you in Stamford. Updates what's next for Renee. Possible spoiler on title match for WWE Clash of Champions. Miro goes on profanity-filled rant on Dave Meltzer's false reporting and WWE's low standards. We're starting today with Triple H news, as though the games faced nearly every big name, one person he hasn't locked horns with is AJ Styles. During his Twitch stream, Styles was asked about a possible Triple H match before the game retires, and the phenomenal one loved the idea, especially if it was Triple H's final match. He said, should I throw it out there and send it out there that I'd be his last match? I would love to do that. I'll let him know I'd do that with him. Him and I have been in the same ring together, but we were on the same team. It was when we were in Japan. It was basically the OC and Triple H. That was fun. Whilst the two have teamed together, Triple H hasn't had a match in 2020, as he missed WrestleMania and his duties backstage only seem to grow. Recently hitting 25 years in WWE, the King of Kings might need to look at his last match coming sooner rather than later, and ending his career against AJ Styles would certainly be a great send-off. We've got some sad news to report now as John Riker, aka WCW's Ralphus, has died. Originally a WCW truck driver, Ralphus was paired up with Chris Jericho as his on-screen security in 1998. And after Jericho left for the WWF in 1999, Ralphus worked with Norman Smiley as well. A comedic character that was loved by WCW fans during his tenure, Chris Jericho revealed on his Saturday Night Special that Ralphus passed, saying, I just found out he passed away like last year. God bless John Riker, that was his real name. In 2018, Jericho spoke about an email correspondence with Ralphus, saying, I sent him an email saying, Hey Ralph, it's just me, Jericho. How are you? Would you like to do my podcast and reconnect? He emailed me back and said, Is this the real Chris Jericho? I said, Yeah man, this is my number. Give me a text or give me a call. Never heard back from him again. I got big leagued by Ralphus. At this time, no cause of death has been made public, and we at Slat Rock would like to send our deepest condolences to Riker's family, friends, and everyone who knew him during this sad time. We're focusing on WWE's mandate that all third-party activities regarding superstars must stop, and though there's been a lot of stories about who is to blame, the reality is that there's multiple reasons. Ringside News reports that they've heard various responses about who's to blame across the board, and though superstars aren't happy if they're losing money and a connection with fans, fans who don't use third-party platforms feel differently. One tenured name in the company told them, Third-party ban is causing a lot of people to be very upset, but what are they going to do? They're exploiting their WWE intellectual property on outside platforms. Given that her name and the Bang Energy Drink commercial was mentioned first, Lana received a lot of flack, with many seeing her as the straw that broke the camel's back, but several other things caused WWE to look into ceasing third-party activity in recent months. Ever since he moved from Mixer, AJ Styles has spoken candidly about WWE business on Twitch, including his beef with Paul Heyman, The Good Brothers releases, his son not watching WWE, and his own positive test. And though the company didn't like him talking about any of these, it was the positive test reveal that was the big one. Cameo isn't much better for WWE as superstars are quote, going into business for themselves, literally, and it was added that WWE are trying to cut a deal with Cameo on a company level to start their own similar service. YouTube is also a problem for some as well, as it's being reported that Sheamus' Celtic Warrior workout channel was apparently an issue since he's using his WWE nickname. So with issues with Twitch, Cameo, and YouTube, it's not hard to see why Vince McMahon was pushed to say enough is enough, which brings us to where we're at now. 
You don't need to subscribe to their Twitch or pay 100 bucks on Cameo to know that superstars aren't happy about this. And Fightful reported that the superstars they spoke to described WWE as being very foggy in regards to whether they'll prevent superstars streaming. Despite the company-wide edict to cease everything by October 2nd, those superstars Fightful spoke to don't plan on quitting. And if they do, they want to be compensated for the loss of income WWE have caused. Fightful reported, Thus far, based on the wrestlers that we've spoken to, none plan on ceasing their cameo or streaming setups. Two specifically noted that if WWE wants them to, they'll need their contracts renegotiated to compensate the limitations and changes. We've previously covered that Paige changed her Twitch name to Soraya to avoid the WWE's new mandate, but it seems that isn't good enough either. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained that Paige's name change wasn't going to fly with WWE. He said, When Paige switched one of her things, Twitch, to Soraya, they were like, that's not gonna fly, because it's still banned, I guess. Anyway, we'll see how this plays out over the next whatever. I mean, most of the talent is not happy from what I gather. It's a real shame that this won't fly, as Paige recently spoke about how much she loves Twitch and the community she's built, saying that she doesn't know what she'd do without the streaming platform. On the other side, AEW won't allow stars to take sponsorships on their own, though during the post-all-out conference, Tony Khan said there's nothing wrong with Twitch streaming. When asked during the conference about Kip Sabian promoting his own Twitch stream during All Out, Cassidy Haynes reported, he said he knows Kip loves Twitch, and he isn't going to try and stop him from using it. Again, it's different for each platform and how you're addressing it. Says he doesn't think he would tell anyone in the company what they can't do outside the company. The fact that Sabian promoted his Twitch channel, and there was text at the bottom of the screen saying AEW supports this message, clearly shows the company is on his side, and aren't afraid at taking shots at what they see as unfair treatment by WWE. Speaking of AEW, Matt Hardy had a scary bump at All Out which required a hospital visit, but after his head hit the pavement, something so graphic that AEW removed the clip from social media, we've got good news. On Twitter, Tony Khan noted that Matt is doing much better, passed his CT scans and an MRI, and thankfully doesn't have a concussion. It was noted that Matt was being driven home to North Carolina, and though Khan didn't say who was driving, he did say that the broken one will be on Dynamite this Wednesday. A lot of fans were worried about Matt after the fall, and with his wife Rebby being especially concerned and for good reason, and though we don't know if Matt will be wrestling this Wednesday, the fact that he's able to appear is an excellent sign. All Out also saw Jon Moxley retain his title against MJF using the band Paradigm Shift, and after the show, Moxley had a lot to say. Given that All Out had actual fans attending thanks to social distancing and mandatory masks, and the company were as close to 15% capacity than ever before. Grabbing the mic after All Out, Moxley said, So good to hear your voices tonight. I wouldn't have it any other way going to war than right here in front of AEW fans, the best fans in pro wrestling. Moxley encouraged fans to cheer so loud that they hear the crowd in Orlando and even Stamford, two cities synonymous with WWE, as the former Dean Ambrose has made it clear he is fine with being in AEW's amphitheater instead of the Thunderdome. One person who could eventually join Jon Moxley is Renee Paquette, but during the conference call, it doesn't seem like the AEW world champion thinks that'll happen. He said, I don't think she wants to be anywhere near my corner. She doesn't really like blood and shit. It's definitely not out of the realm of possibility for her, since she's a jack of all trades. If it wasn't for that non-compete, she could have popped on camera tonight if she wanted to. Moxley also said that his wife's goals are outside of wrestling, though he said he expects her to still have her toe dipped in the industry, and joked, I want her to get that Katie Couric Good Morning America gig so I can have a sugar mama. We'll have to see whether Moxley gets his, ahem, sugar mama, but given her many, many talents, we're sure she'll succeed with any contract she signs, even if it'll be a while before she's allowed to speak to any pro wrestling company. We are looking ahead to Clash of Champions next as we've got a potential spoiler for this month's pay-per-view. If you've been watching SmackDown lately, you'll know that AJ Styles wants his rematch against Intercontinental Champion Jeff Hardy, who beat Styles for the gold a few weeks back. Sami Zayn also returned, bringing his own title that WWE stripped from him due to him opting not to compete earlier this year. And during Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said fans can expect a triple threat match between the three at Clash of Champions. 
Jeff's title win was a big moment to achieve in the Thunderdome, but time will tell how long his reign lasts. Now, WWE has their own idea of what a superstar should look like, and one person who knows that is Sage Beckett. On Twitter, Beckett spoke about losing 130 pounds before signing an NXT contract, but said that the company forced her to do weekly weigh-ins, told her to lose even more weight to be marketable, and released her while pregnant on International Women's Day. Clearly a bad look for a company that promotes itself as champions of women in sports. Back to AEW next as JR has apologized for a crass joke he made during All Out. During the Dark Order match, JR asked if Anna J had a wardrobe malfunction, but said that maybe that was his wishful thinking a comment that led to online backlash and JR apologizing for his quote, weak attempt at humor. Though he apologized, he also asked people online to lighten up, and hopefully the arguable greatest voice in wrestling can avoid another embarrassing situation like this. And we're ending today with news from Miro as he's weighed in on WWE's new rule with a profanity-filled rant. At the start of all this, Lana was called out as the reason behind the rule, being described as the straw that broke the camel's back by Dave Meltzer. And whilst it's true that WWE are targeting superstars who take sponsorships, she was furious about the report, as was her husband. Since the former US champion isn't with WWE, he can have a Twitch and use the platform to eviscerate Meltzer's report against his wife, saying, One day he's going to burn in hell. Meltzer, go ahead and collect everyone's money, but let me tell you, once you die, you are going to hell. I don't listen to Meltzer, but my problem is people listen to this guy. He has a personal agenda because he's got something against CJ. This guy has no knowledge. He has zero knowledge. Yeah, he's got people from the office that feed him meaningless stuff. I'm not the first person to call you out and I won't be the last one, but I don't think there's a single story out there from Meltzer that has been true. He has no information. Zero. Meltzer wasn't the only person on Miro's hit list, as after WWE opted to not tag him on social media in a video from 2016 when he faced Roman Reigns, Miro didn't mince his words, saying, I just think it's such a low-class, dumb, most unprofessional thing to do. I think it's so, so, so stupid because I don't work for WWE, but I still get WWE checks every quarter like the merchant stuff they still sell it, and they still send me my money. I ain't freaking dead either, so why wouldn't you tag me? Why wouldn't you use the tag? Why wouldn't you do that? I'm just trying to understand. It's not like I work for somebody else, like I work for TNA and they don't want to promote me. Yeah, I get that, but I'm here jobless. The former superstar added that he could file for unemployment if he wanted, but he doesn't because he feels there's people who need it more. And given that he's still allowed to make serious money on Twitch as well as do sponsorships unlike some people he knows, the Bulgarian brute is doing pretty well for himself. During his Twitch session, Miro brought up how WWE hasn't even congratulated Lana on her big 1 million subscriber milestone, something he feels the company must rectify. This is still an ongoing situation, and we'll have to see how it pans out. But for now, things don't look good for the WWE superstars who used third-party platforms to connect with fans.